Good evening, Dean Davison, LiveWeatherBlogs.com meteorologist here with your overnight outlook. We're taking a look across the country here. We have a few things. We have a flash flood watch. We have a dense fog of wide rats, including parts of the Roanoke Valley, and the parts to the west of the Triad. With some freeze warnings down here in Louisiana. And some winter weather down here in California. And wind chills, advisories up here in the upper Midwest. All right. Current warm temperatures around the Roanoke Valley, 50 degrees at 1 o'clock in the morning. This is just insane. They're thinking that we couldn't even get up to 20 in times prior. <laughs> 54 in Blacksburg, 50 in Galax, 58, almost 60 degrees in Danville, and 56 out in Lynchburg. 43 in Lewisburg, and 44 in Bluefield. All right, national temperatures. See where the front's located? Right along here west of the Roanoke Valley, you got Temperature 56 in Washington, 52 in Atlanta, 69 in Miami. That warm air is pushed up towards New Jersey. 41 in Boston, but look 27 in Louisville, 50 in New Orleans, 31 in Dallas. See where the cold air is coming from. 4 in Minneapolis, 14 in Chicago, 18 in Kansas City, 9 in Santa Fe, 10 in Salt Lake City. This cold air is going to push itself in, but it's going to pretty much trap itself to the north, and there's going to be a ridge set up here keeping it warmer for next week also. We get down to 40 and then back, we boot back itself back up or two into the 50 or 50 degrees two days later. You'll see that in the forecast. You can see here where the front located here west of Roanoke. That'll move through overnight and we will see dry air tomorrow. Here we're going to look at uh, New Year's Eve and what happened. Arkansas was crazy. What happened? You know, the moisture was getting into the place. Heavy rain occurred. I always head up. Tornadoes on the outside of St. Louis, Missouri, just south of Jackson, Mississippi, and in Cincinnati, Arkansas, got a tornado and unfortunately fatal. Half dollar size hail fell. And I mean, you see what a greatest chance of severe weather were. And some of the warnings that occurred at 2 09 p.m. So. Definitely a bad time uh, in Arkansas. Preliminary, they had an EF3 out. I may, they may see it go up to, may see it go up to an EF4 or even an EF5. I mean, they're going, going to do some more extensive research to find that out. Synoptic maps, you'll see how this goes after the front, front passes. The high pressure builds into the south, and this progresses to the east. By Monday evening, you might get some lake effect snow Monday evening also. New system moves into the far west coast and that'll stick around for Tuesday and as the high builds. Warm air will creep itself back in. We'll go through three to seven days. High pressure builds off the coast. Warmer air will kick in before that next front comes through and then we get a nice build in for the next system. But you see that it'll be a clipper come down, blow through, and it looks like it tries to make a triple low pressure along the coast before this thing really cranks up and moves into the northeast. When that gets off the coast, what will happen? Will we have enough cold air places? We'll possibly see a storm a little far out at this time to call that, but it's something we're going to keep an eye on here at liveweatherblogs.com. Stay with us for the latest information as it comes available. All right, let's take a look at one more thing before I go into the road forecast. I want to show you what I come across this evening is the five most Five biggest events of 2010 in the Roanoke Valley. We're going to go through that right now. Number one was the most consecutive days on the ground in Blacksburg and Lynchburg. 71 days in Blacksburg. It's just unbelievable. Uh, thinking about that, you have the idea of a lot of days with snow in a row. It's pretty crazy. Number two is the severe weather outlook. Outbreak of October 26th, 27th. You can remember that. Yeah, I had Yen Me on here, going pretty, uh, pretty hardcore on on the uh, blog about that. It was an overnight situation, nocturnal. Luckily, nobody was killed in these. And I'll go into that. Actually, go deeper into that. The warmest day, summer on record, Roanoke, the Inville, Blacksburg, and Bluefield. March 12th, 13th, flooding that's as far south as Virginia. The January cold snap. 
But we're going to go right into the severe weather because I think this is was the most, to me, it's one of the most significant things. To me, it was probably the most significant thing that occurred during the year, as a, as according from my standpoint, around locally. And definitely a, a interesting tornado here. You can see where the Hulk Echo actually was here. This is in Henry County. Here's the thing. There's that and tornado would have occurred right in here. There's a little bit of a hook. We see this indentation here. That kind of shows that kind of shows where the inflow is coming into this on a reflectivity map. So just a little bit of insight there. Another tornado. Once again, this is a little harder to pick out where the tornado was in here. But if you look closely, this kind of has that inflow notch here, south, look southwest of South Boston, you get inflow notch, and that would be where a serious rotation was occurring, right in that generalized location. So, just a few things I want to you know, point out here on reflectivity maps that you would look for in the severe weather season. It's something like to teach you a little bit. These inflow notches are extremely important just to really see on reflectivity tornado. I can show you this on a velocity, it's a lot easier to pick up. Remember where I said it was in South Boston, South and Southeast, South Southeast. There you go. The inflow notch, extremely red, white, and there green. Really good inflow notch. Shows up on the reflectivity, and this is the velocity stance. You can see it definitely had good rotation. This is where it was located in this picture, and that's what I'm saying. It's hard to see on this. That's why it's hard to see on reflectivity sometimes. Um, tornado, because this one definitely doesn't pick it up as well as the other ones picked it up. Thus is radar meteorology. So chance showers overnight, 44 degrees, 49 Sunday, partly sunny skies, 42 Monday, 46 Tuesday, 38 on Wednesday with the cool down. And the triad, much like Rony Pacha, here for some dense fog when it's not raining. Chance of rain, 53 overnight, 54, 1 degree up for Saturday, uh, Sunday before temperatures fall. 45 Monday, 49 Tuesday, 47 on Wednesday. And a special look at the forecast for Miami, Florida, where the Virginia Tech Hokies on Monday will be playing the Stanford team Cardinals. For this evening, 50, excuse me, 67 degrees, 76 Sunday, 61 Sunday night, and then on full day, 78. Temperatures will probably be right around the 70 degree mark for kickoff before it gets down to 64 overnight on Monday, 77 on Tuesday, 77 on Wednesday. That's just the beautiful Florida weather you would come to expect. But so, lots of information in this blog. We don't want to do eight minutes worth of video, but I'd cover my forecast and that special report on the 10, excuse me, the five most. Uh, act, five events of 2010. For liveweatherblogs.com, this is meteorologist Dean Davidson. Have a great evening, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.